I'm Sarah. I'm an art conservator and the director of conservation at Center Art Studio in New York City. Today, I'm going to walk you through how we restore a 16th century sculpture of St. George. This sculpture is owned by a collector in New York City, and he brought the sculpture to us when it was damaged in transit from Barcelona. The first thing we do when we get an object into the studio to restore is perform an initial inspection. So we want to understand what is the current condition of the object. And once we understand that, then we are able to start formulating a treatment plan. This is a sculpture of St. George slaying a dragon. The, the lore is that the villagers had to sacrifice somebody to this dragon every year. And then one year it became the princess of the town that was going to be sacrificed. And so St. George, the soldier, came in, slayed the dragon, saved the princess and you know, has been revered and is a saint. This is a depiction of St. George, but it actually has the face and the hair of King Ferdinand II. Clearly it's very well carved, it's polychrome, gilded. It is a significant piece that would have been well funded. After we've come up with a treatment plan, the first thing that we do is separate the figure, dragon, and base and we are going to clean each one of those components separately. It has a very, very heavy, glossy varnish on top of it, which just is unnecessary. It comes across as heavy-handed. We can tell that there's dirt sitting under the top varnish layer, so that means that whoever last varnished this piece and worked on it didn't fully clean it properly. They put new coats of material over dirt and bad restorations. We start out with uh, solvent gels and we apply the gel to the surface and the gel holds the solvent against the surface so it, it allows it to penetrate a little bit better. When the gel is on the surface, we come in with a swab and kind of agitate the gel to turn it over to make sure that, um, you know, fresh, clean gel is making contact with that area that we're cleaning. The most difficult component to clean and get the varnish off of is the base, just because it is so thick and heavy and waxy. So that takes a bit more time and care to remove. We look with a UV flashlight at the surface, and if we see green reflecting back, that indicates to us that there's a yellowed varnish or coating on that surface. It's typical to have us actually clean with a flashlight so we can see where uh, we're removing those green areas. The face and the hands are, they're very dirty, and with a proper cleaning, they're going to really transform from um, kind of a dull, murky color to a bright skin color that uh, really is dramatically different than how it looked pre-cleaning. When we remove that gel uh, that's cleaned off all those layers, we see in that cleaned area, we see old crackle lines and that crackle is desirable because it just indicates the age of the piece. And you want to see, you'd expect an object from the 1500s to have lots of variation and age to it. So once you remove those layers, you start to see the complexity of the surface and it just takes on a whole new um, substantial feeling. When art is in transit, that's when it's really at most risk of incurring damage. And unfortunately, that's just what happened in this case. It couldn't support itself. I mean, it's meant to be a freestanding object and it could not vertically support itself. To do the structural repairs on this figure, we have to remove the iron rods that are going through the feet of St. George and into the dragon. Those are held into the sculpture with some kind of bonding glue epoxy resin. We're not exactly sure what that is. So we need to break that bond in order to get those rods out. This is obviously a very tricky, delicate procedure because we're going to have to remove those rods, but we really don't want to cause any further damage. So we test a variety of methods. So we will chip off 
a bit of that compound and put it in a vial of water or solvents and, and do a test to see, we can see that if that little chip dissolves. So we were able to determine that it would soften in water, but it didn't dissolve it. So we could use water to help us, but we're still gonna have to use drills and uh, more mechanical approaches. So we sort of break away that old epoxy that's holding the rods into the sculpture, and we use clay scripts and clamps as we go. We add a bit of water while we're wiggling the rod to um, break that bond. Ultimately, we switch out those tools for a drill. At first, we use a regular drill bit to try to break it up a bit, and then we have to switch out to an extra long drill bit because these recesses are actually very deep. So we use an extra long drill bit to drill out that compound, and that ultimately allows us to remove the rod. Then we have to dig out the holes the recesses where the rods were in order to remove all of the epoxy and uh, just start fresh. So we use um, a drill with a Forstner bit to enlarge the holes to about the diameter of an inch in order to have enough space to take the new stainless steel rods and the epoxy that we're going to put in. The iron rods that we took out were in very deep, deeper than they needed to be, so we're going to plug those holes with little pieces of wooden dowel that we'll use fish glue to um, glue into the recess just to make the hole a little bit shallower. It works really well. It's a natural material. It binds really well. It dries clear. It's literally just made from condensed fish. In order to prep the sculpture to receive the rods, we had to repair the broken foot. So we use conservation epoxies to reattach the broken components of the foot together to make it one piece again. And then once it's solid, it, it's in a position to then take the new rods. We test fit them into St. George and the Dragon and we hold up the sculpture so we can align where everything is going to fit together. And then we'll mark on the dragon where the stainless steel rods meet it. We use our very old but very uh, handy drill press to drill out those recesses that we've marked on the dragon. So where we've marked those circles, that's where we're going to drill. And that will just create the recess that will allow the rods to sit, um, sit onto the dragon. Then we attach the figure to the dragon. At that point, St. George and the dragon become one object. So they are bonded together. Then we have to hold it in position. So we'll tie up the sculpture and make sure it stays in a stable position, ideally overnight, while the epoxy fully cures and becomes really hard. The next morning when we come back to the studio, we can untie it and it will hold its own and it will be stable and able to stand up. After the structural repairs are done, we apply a final coat of shellac to the entire object. We use a thin coat of shellac. You can always add more um, and build it up, but we always start with a thin coat and see how that looks. Typically, you don't need a very heavy coat. It's unnecessary and it, it just presents better if there's less sitting on top of the surface. This was a significant project. There was a lot of work that went into it, so there were weeks of active work. I'd say about five or six of our conservators had their hand in uh, restoring St. George. I'm very satisfied with this restoration. I think work we did was not insignificant. It was a major undertaking. It was, I think, a very successful project and we all feel very accomplished that we were able to restore it and get it back to this point. So we're very happy with it. It's, it's just beautiful and it has a very strong, powerful presence to it when you see it in person.